throws it, along with Ray Lewis and Sean Taylor. Second down. Smith is dead. Oh, my. Also, Charles won way behind the line of scrimmage, too. We may have offsetting. Oh, I don't think so. But that is a point of emphasis here. Now, let's see if this is the body weight on the quarterback rule. Abel earlier, and on a fourth down, he rubbed Mitchell Trubisky. Here, he gets Kirk Cousins. Wow. And again, it's going to be, what is the definition of roughing? It's, you mentioned earlier about being able to... Uh, another hit, roughing the passer penalty, just your reaction. <laughs> well, obviously, I don't agree with it, again. Um, you know, whereas last week, I thought I did it, you know, did it hit, hit the quarterback correctly. Um, head was to the side again, wrapped him up. Um, and you see, as soon as I hit the ground, you see me try and pull my hands out. Um, you know, obviously, when you're tackling a guy from the front, you're going to land on him. You know, but that's a football play. I hit, I hit him from the front, got my head across, wrapped up. I've never heard of anybody tackling somebody without any hands. You just saw Clay Matthews get called for at least two ridiculous roughing the passer penalties. Threw in a couple others there. Welcome to Andrew Says. My name is Andrew. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. Enough NFL over this weekend. Enough Kavanaugh hearings over the past week. So to many people, these calls are a fundamental change of what they see football as a sport being. And how I saw the described call, actually I saw it live. I tuned in just before. And they described it as Clay Matthews using 50% or more of his weight when falling on the opposing QB. Now the penalty, as per described by the NFL's new interpretation, goes as follows. You tell me if you think it's ridiculous. The committee reviewed hits on quarterbacks inside and outside the pocket. These actions put the quarterback at risk for injury. The officiating department will emphasize that the defender is responsible for avoiding landing on the quarterback when taking him to the ground. Now, in general, I feel like what the NFL does when they change rules, they do it pretty well. As compared to the NHL, who every year they have a fit at the end of the year that they're not having enough goals and they want to change the way the sport is played. So every five years we have to deal with people saying we should make the nets so big that the goalies can't cover the angles. It's like saying let's make the basketball hoops bigger. It's, it's very silly. It's annoying. But for moving extra points back to the kickoffs, we've seen over the years like... Uh, not leading with your helmet, horse collar tackles, that's the Terrell Owens rule. The NFL has done things that actually do make the game more exciting and without limiting it and changing it fundamentally while trying to reduce injuries. So I think they've been pretty good at that. However, if you sit down and watch an NFL game, there's so many injuries it's insane. They cut away to commercial a lot of the time. Now this is from the NFL's own recorded statistics because obviously movies, uh, Talking, internet, everybody's concerned with head injuries. Last year, there were 13.5% more concussions. Even with their changes, it went from 243 to 281. Self-reported concussions increased by 9% from 2016 to 2017. Injuries overall have gone up. On Thursday games, for example, they average almost 7 injuries per game, up 1.6 from the year before. Now, the Thursday games are significant because players complain about those. Sunday to Thursday, short time. As opposed to usual Monday to Sunday, Sunday to Sunday routine. Players don't like it. They don't have time to repair, prepare, and repair. Because you don't have as good of a game plan, that equals a less exciting game if the teams aren't prepared enough. And then, of course, the injuries, they have to have time to heal. But clearly, the NFL does it for the ratings. They want something to throw up on Thursday night that people, most fans, will probably go and watch that. If you watch NFL, you'll be like, I'll watch the Thursday game if I have time. Clearly something has to be done. But is it this? Roughing the passer, number 98, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic. And here it is again. Here it is again. They got Clay Matthews again earlier today on the same call as last week, and that's what they say using his body and landing on him with full force, and that's the rule that's in the league, and, and that's the call. I don't agree with it, but I'm tired of talking about it. Players do understand where the league is coming from, however. They know that they want to prevent people's injuries, and overall it makes their careers longer if they do it. So here's one of the best defensive players in the game, Von Miller, speaking to that. 
I don't know if you know, but um, sacking the quarterback is mostly illegal now in pro football. <laughs> what, what, what do you make of the way officials are calling the game these days? I mean, it's tough. I mean, I, I understand it. You know, let me not uh, make any mistake about that. I totally understand it. The game is about great quarterbacks, and you want these great quarterbacks to be on the field 100%. Um, but it, it is tough. You know, it is tough. You know, the call like, uh, you know, Clay Matthews had, you know, that, that, that is tough, especially at that moment in the game. You know, for me, what helps with me is I, I just go for the ball each and every time. You know, if he's throwing the ball, I'm swatting for the ball. If he still has the ball, I'm trying to rip the ball out. I, I feel like that really takes you off of the quarterback and uh, onto the ball. And, and now, I think most sports watchers and even those who are super concerned about head, head injuries and player safety still think that this is a bit too much. So obviously something has to be done, but is this all it's about, though? Is protecting the QBs to this degree just about player safety? I mean, this is still a business, and I have two interesting points to make that I've spoken to some people about, and I think they're worthwhile, and I think they're interesting. And the first of it is about how QBs are being treated like princesses, because they are. You can't land on people? Come on. You can't hit below the knee. This is a Tom Brady rule, pretty much. You can't slam them, you can't spin them around, you can't pick them up, you can't drive them into the ground, you can't hit them in the head, you can't lead with your head. The list goes on and down the list further and further. Now you're supposed to tackle a guy, you're supposed to be running full speed at a guy, and tackle him and not land on him, or else it's a penalty. So there's guys like Cam Newton and Ben Roethlisberger who are huge guys. And if these are the type of calls you're going to be against, that are going to be against the defensive players... You're pulling the guy down, and you have to somehow stop before you actually pull him to the ground. Well, these big quarterbacks are just going to shrug you off if you let up at all. And so many of these examples, it's when the it's right when the ball is being thrown. So that's an extra added sense of craziness. You're supposed to not be coming at him. What do you have to five foot rule like it's two hand touch? My friend said the other day, just give them flags and get it over with. Just give the quarterbacks flags to get. So I took a list of all the starting QBs in the league. I narrowed it down to, like, star performers. Real guys that people come to watch. People turn on the TV to watch. People buy tickets to watch. All-time great Super Bowl winners. Then I narrowed that list to those under 30. And here's what I got. You've got Russell Wilson, who's got one Super Bowl. He's 29. Cam Newton, who's 29. He can't seem to win the big games for some reason. And Carson Wentz, 25. He was injured for the Super Bowl, but he still got the ring. Now, besides Carson Wentz... There are no new superstars. Russell Wilson and the Eagles are pretty much done. And like I said, Cam Newton can't seem to win the big games. So who knows what's going on with him. They have to hope that Carson Wentz wins three Super Bowls, goes Tom Brady, wins five Super Bowls. And they also have to hope that Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, and Patrick Mahomes get light years better. Mahomes is having a good season. Deshaun Watson's on the Texans, Dak Prescott's on the Cowboys. Can they get better? They have to get better if they want to be stars and lead their teams to championship. It doesn't look like it right now. So as of right now, those are their only hopes for the future. Maybe maybe Marcus Mariotti. He's got nerve damage, if he can stay healthy. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady. These guys are not young in football years at all. How much time do they have left? Now, the NFL knows this. They know their QBs can't be taking damage and going down this year for the good of their ratings, for the good of entertainment, and for how bad their situation actually looks. I don't think it's any uh, any mystery that any big corporation like this, of course, human to human, you care about people's injuries, but in the bottom line, you care about your stars making you money. And that's why they're babying of the QBs right now. They know they need these guys to shine because there's not much time left to milk out of them. You can say Sam Darnold, Jeff Goff, these names, but they haven't proven themselves yet. I haven't heard of anyone who doesn't watch football being like, this Jeff Goff guy hasn't happened. And the last thing I'll leave you with is this, and I think it's valid. Again, of course I do. Amidst all the rule changes and the injuries, contract holdouts that have happened, Le'Veon Bell... Odell Beckham Jr., these are two of the most exciting guys in the game, and they're just like, give me my money. How about the fact, remember, the XFL is coming back in 2020. Sounds silly, but it's coming back. And the WWE does huge numbers. Do you remember when channels refused, sports channels refused to have the WWE, the WWE, they refused to have it on their channels for whatever reason, but they had to stop that stance because it's too good of ratings? 
of all the things on TV now, it's mostly sports and shows like The Walking Dead that people still watch, and WWE. Now, obviously, a WWE fan does not make an XFL fan, but if you compare, for example, the NFL's 3 million subscribers on YouTube to the WWE's 30, that's 10%. Will 10% of you uh, WWE fans check out the XFL? Yes, they will. Do WWE fans buy everything, watch everything, follow all their stars on Instagram? Yes, they do. Now, you combine all that against the kneeling controversy, the injuries, the contract holdouts, the bad rule changes, and I don't know. I don't know, NFL. I watch less because of all this. You have all-time greats in touchdowns and passing and Super Bowls ready to retire. Philip Rivers, Drew Brees, Eli Manning, Tom Brady, Roethlisberger, Flacco, Alex Smith, the list is pretty long. Can Carson Wentz win for you every year? Can the Eagles make a sweet run every year? Can Tom Brady play until he's 60? Will the NFL place some sort of institute, some sort of stem cell renewal policy so their players can play for another 20 years? I don't know. NFL, these calls are changing the outcomes of games. They're changing them negatively. You look at that call on Clay Matthews against the Vikings, they were about to win the game. Penalty gets called, Vikings come down, tie the game. It turns into a tie, another thing we're seeing a lot of ties. XFL's coming. People are retiring. Can the NFL survive? You tell me. <laughs>